between um, Ephraim and Rabbi Joseph Edery. So here you will receive the advertising, you know, before the movie, before the film. Um, so the Zoom call number five will be um, divided in three parts. Okay, uh, sorry for the, um, you know, shut up. Um, I mean, after, I think we are already like, uh, you know, the time flies, uh, Joseph, with uh, with us. I really, you know, I hope you enjoy uh, is as much as I do, <laughs> you know, talking 100%. about these great things. Okay, let's wrap it. Let's wrap it up then. We had a few other topics that I was hoping we'd get through, but it's good that we, we're learning Torah. It's also yes. Um, so I want to just say uh, uh, Memtes, which is Memtes is forty nine. Chapter 49, um, verse uh, 20, uh, 22, half base. This is the blessing that Yosef individually gets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ben Porat Yosef, Ben Porat Ale Ain. Banot Saada Ale Shur. Vayemaru Verobu Vayis. Vayistimuhu Baale Chitim, Vateshev Be Eitan Kashto, Vayofozu Zore, Yadav Mide Abiriakov, Misham Roe Eben Israel, Nekela Vicha Vyazreka, the Et Shakai, Vayvarheka Birchot Shamai, Mel Birchat Tom of it, Tahat Birchot Shadai Veraham, Birchat Avicha Gavu Al Birchat Horai, Ad Avat Kivot Olam, Tihiena Lerosh Yosef, Ulakat Kod Nazir Echav. Okay. Okay, shall I read this here um, after this uh, nearly infallible New King James Version? Joseph go is ahead, a fruitful go bow, a fruitful bow with a well, uh, with a, by a well. His branches run over the wall. The archers have bitterly grieved him, shot at him, and hated him. But his bow remained in strength, and the arms of his hand were made strong by the hands of the mighty God of Jacob. From there is a shepherd, the stone of Israel, by the God of your fathers who will help you and by the Almighty who will bless you with blessings of heaven above, blessings of the deep that lies beneath, blessings of the breasts and of the womb. The blessings of your father have excellence, the blessings of my ancestors up to the utmost bound of the everlasting hills. They shall be on the head of Joseph and on the crown of the head of him who has separated from his brethren. I think and, and, uh, amongst the Nazir, amongst the brethren, the Nazir. Yes, yeah, so the first, one of the first things he says is Ben Parat Yosef, Ben Parat Ale Ain. Ale Ain is, Ale means rise, Ain is I. And, uh, Banot Saada Ale Shur, which is the, the daughter the, the girls will, will march Ale Shur. Uh, he'll be very attractive in, in very simple English. But uh, yeah, it uh, is very very it is very interesting, you know. When you say so we are uh, you know we have here the blessings, we have here the blessing, the firstborn blessing of Jacob towards the lad, you know, towards Ephraim and Asha. And now and this is how in uh, 49 1 and Jacob called his son saying gather together that I may tell you what shall befall you in the last days. In and then the he can't days. say it. He loses uh, the Shekhinah again and he can't say it. Yaakov al ve amar ha Fu, ach du Scheibleister. We, he asfu, he asfu, ja. We, äh, we agid alachem, et asheri ikra, et chem baacharit hayamim. Okay, this is, And, I couldn't have said this better, you know, it just would have taken like uh, many more time, you know. Yeah. So, it is, we acharim hayamim. So, it is the coming days, it's the coming days. So, while the, um, yes, there are blessings in there. There are blessings in there, but the uh, the the real blessing of the firstborn, well, this went to Ephraim and Manasseh, and Ephraim being put in front. But the rest is 
a prophecy, a prof a prophecy in the, you know, when in the state of Yaakov, who was, you know, filled with the Ruach HaKodesh, as he said, you know, he was able to view, you know, seeing the, you know, seeing his sons now for growing up and his individual characters and so on and so on. He was able to view far, far, far in the last day and says, okay, this will, will happen with you in the last days. You know, and right, but oh, I want to, I want to say something. He, it, it, again, we have to bring Rashi in, and uh, Ra Rashi has an opinion that says like this, and he brings it from uh, multiple sources. He says, "Va'agid alachem," and I will tell you, "Bikesh legalot et haketz." He wanted to reveal to them the ketz, which is the day that Mashiach is revealed. Vinistalka imeno shchina, and the heavenly presence ran away from him. And he started saying other things. Started blessing them. So I think that the blessing, again, like I told you earlier, if we go by the, it, there's no beginning and end in the Torah, it's very possible that Menashe and Ephraim get their blessings later. But if we go by the chronological order, Oh, when I say that there's no earlier and later in the Torah, I'm not just saying it like, you know, casually. We know that, uh, for example, the whole sin of the golden calf is recorded in the Torah after they build the Mishkan, if I'm not mistaken. And we know that the Mishkan wasn't built only after the sin of the golden calf. It was actually the way that the Jews repented for the sin of the golden calf. So there's a couple, if I'm not mistaken, I might be mixing something up. There's something over there. There's a few other times in the Torah where the timeline is completely messed up. Um, uh, I think when Moshe Rabbeinu is going to Midian and coming back to Egypt, there's a couple things over there that are also, the timeline is not messed up. The Torah is just saying things, I guess, in a certain order. But uh, there's a the famous uh, five words of the Jewish people, Shema Yisrael. Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad, Hero Israel, God is our God, God is one. This is said by the tribes. Basically, Yaakov wants to tell them, like we said here, in this verse here, um, come around and, and listen to what I want. I want to tell you the end of days. And then, and then he can't tell them. So he says, what's wrong with you guys? Are you guys not faithful to Hashem that, that I can't tell you when, when Mashiach comes? And then they swear to Yaakov, uh, no, we are faithful. Listen, Israel. They're talking to Yaakov. They're, listening. They're talking to their father. Shema Israel, Listen, Israel. Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad. We swear we're, we are tzaddikim. Maybe you don't have the Shechina. is not letting you talk for other reasons. But it's not because we're sinners. We're faithful. We're loyal. And, 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 and this no, is the I cry don't... of at this yeah. point, you know, we are not yeah. talking about people. We are talking about, you know, the uh, the character traits of each one of the sons. I mean, they are clearly named uh, all, uh, within these, uh, within the blessings or within the prophecies or whatever you want to call them. Yep. Yeah. And um, as he saw, you know, in Ephraim Manasseh, you know, something. You know, he also saw, of course, in each and every son something. And uh, I mean, it's quite amazing, you know, that when when we take a look, you know, we have only Judah and Joseph. I mean, they have like longer portions. They have longer portions, you know, uh, uh, in uh, uh, Genesis 49. While the other tribes, you know, but the, the other individuals, they were not even tribes. They were just the sons. Oh, let me show you something. This is the, all the, on the bottom here, all this is just a Rashi. Yeah, it's just Rashi, yeah. And usually you have a page, maybe a little bit of Rashi on the bottom. For the blessings of Yosef, there's so much detail because it's almost like going through his whole life. Uh, and, and, you know, it speaks a little bit about him. Uh, you know... You know you know something very uh, you, you remember when here Mr. Donald Trump Mr. Donald Trump shut down the government for the longest period in time ever 
because of uh, a wall, the... because of a wall. Now he shut the government down on the day that parasha was read in the synagogue. On the Shabbat, on the Shabbat, here Joseph shot, I mean, it was, you know, um, here his branches run over the wall and he was always telling you, say, yeah, we want to have a wall, but the Vatican has a bigger wall, you know, they also have a high wall, <laughs> you know. So, and I, um, I honestly, uh, you know, believe, you know, that they, I mean, they, they recalc they calculated before, they calculated before. I mean, this is why Trumpy here went out with the Bible. This is why he uh, opened up the embassy. This is why he, you know, um, you know, uh, annexed the Golan, you know, or at least not annex the Golan, but allowed Israel to annex the Golan and started the peace of prosperity plan. Sleepy, crazy Joe Biden didn't bound to. You know, peace and prosperity plan for um, Judea and Samaria should have brought in 50 billion US dollars. And our beautiful democratic friends here, <laughs> welcome uh, Joe Biden, Catholic Joe Biden, uh, well, they destroyed this all. They destroyed this all, you know, but I found this after four oh, one... I found this amazing, okay. you know, that Trump shut down the wall shut down the government when that issue was read in the Sino 2008. I want to say that uh, Alay Shur also, that I, the, the Alay, uh, the Ben Porat Yasser Ben Porat Alay Ayn is because Yosef, when Esav confronts Yaakov and the two camps, Yosef stood in, uh, high in front of his mother because he figured that Esav was such a heated individual if he sees his mother, he's going to want to marry her. And he just didn't, he wanted, he didn't want Asav's evil eye to meet his mother. And for that, he was blessed that no evil eye should at attack, attach to him. And it's also similar to the blessing that we said earlier with Menashe and Ephraim. Um, also in that vein, a little bit. Anyway, Ulf, um, we have to wrap it up. So, uh, yeah, unfortunately, I, unfortunately. Yeah, unfortunately. Yes, unfor there's a lot. Really there's a lot of. Unfortunately, uh, you know, I think we just continue. We just continue later on. Is um, right now where we 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 ended, because we have now the complete issue, of course, of the Shiloh. You know, in um, Genesis forty nine ten, where you know about Judah, it said, okay, you will have the scepter and the Mekokek, the lawgiver until Shiloh comes. And then, of course, the whole issue is, okay, now who's now the Shiloh? Who is the guy who belongs to them? So my, my take on this, it's the Shiloh, and I put this also now under Yair Davidi's latest uh, video, The Messiah is a Jew, so where he refers to uh, Genesis 49.10, where everybody agrees, okay, the Shiloh definitely is Jewish. I said, no, the Shiloh is Ephraim. Ephraim is a Shiloh. He's the firstborn, and he is named just one chapter before. Just one chapter. All right, Ulf. You know, my I, I was trying to explain it will be very Hans. <laughs> of course it will. <laughs> I was trying to explain Hans that um, um you know there's first of all, first of all, the the reason for our discussions is because studying Torah is a mitzvah. That's number one. And second of all, especially if it's connected to Mashiach and to the seven laws of Noah and to clarification in all these things. Second of all, and every minute that we're learning Torah is a mitzvah. So that's number one. Number two, we're not trying to bring light into wherever it's already light. We're trying to bring light into where there's darkness. And where is there more darkness than in the internet? <laughs> and, uh, you know, so what we're doing, it, it might not be on the, you know, on the, you know, uh, you know, David Butts keeps coming up to me and he's like, uh, you know, when are you, you know, the, the re I know the solution to the world's issues. When the Jews accept Jesus as their savior, that's when it's all going to fix, you know, that's when it's all going to work out. So obviously, is David still uh, is still David is still up on this uh, on this uh, path? 
I think so. I mean, you know, it's very hard for people to disconnect from, you know, the way they, they were raised and whatever. But I think that deeper than that, and this is a, the same thing that I told you uh, that we're dealing with the Sanhedrin, even Jews amongst Jews, there's a certain place, of course, th that there's a certain place we need to get to, we need to arrive, where we can... Uh, bring our resources in in ahavat in ahavat chinam in love for 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 no reason um and unify all groups whether it's the nation of ephraim group the jewish people but not in like there was one time a, a priest that came to some jewish prisoner and he said to him uh um uh, if you in the i think in the spanish inquisition he said if you let me um baptize your children i'll let you go free so he asked the priest would you want me to convert your kids to judaism so the priest said no so he said so why would you want to convert my kids to christianity and the priest was confused he walked away i don't know what the end of the story was but the, 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 the point that i'm trying to bring across here is is that the Torah again? Like I told you earlier, that we should we should make a graph about the nation of Ephraim, where they fit in in the stages in the twenty in the forty two st stages going out of Egypt. You know, there's the Noahides, and then there's but but then there's the you know the ultra orthodox Noahides, which are like almost about to convert. You know, um, or they're or they're studying Torah on a level that some Jews are not on that level. You know. So that would be like the nation of Ephraim, in my opinion. They're 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 like almost there, you know. They're just like again, there's a very big identity crisis in the world. We spoke about this a little bit, but the point is that I think that I also try to tell this to Hans, and I don't know if he got it. But the point is, I think that like you told me that there are many Mashiachs. If we're gonna even say Sham Niba Bishnei Mashiach, at that time he prophesied about the two Mashiachs. Mashiach ben Yosef, Mashiach ben Yehuda, whatever it is, and then, and then we said that uh, uh, we say Al Tigu be Mashiachai, don't touch my Mashiachs. What do the sages say? What are the Mashiachs? Elu Tinokotel Bet Rabban. These are the the children of the house of the rabbis. These are the the, the children that come from the house of the rabbis. So, Uvin Vi Al Tareu, and don't and don't question my prophets. So, yeah. I, I believe, the, I, uh, when we are talking about many uh, or more Mashiachs or the different ones, you know, we are referring to Ovatya. Ovatya, last sentence where it says there will be saviors. Saviors are coming to. So it's plural. Yes. So what yeah. I'm trying to say in a nutshell, and with this I'm going to wrap up and uh, let you uh, have the closing statement, is that I think it's important for different groups to understand. That, of course, like I told him, I studied the Torah from the Rebbe, and I believe the Rebbe is Mashiach. If they study Torah from Ulf, they believe that Ulf is Mashiach. And I, and I respect that. Even though I've been religious and a Jew for 30 years, and some of the guys in your group have been studying with you for three years. But it's okay. It's fine. Uh, if, they, if I would, <laughs> you know, no, you have people for five years, whatever it is, it's fine. But the point I'm saying is, is that truly your teacher should be your Mashiach. And you shouldn't have to, but but you have to be open enough to understand that there are many teachers in the world, bringing yeah. th their students, thousands of students, hundreds of students, whatever it is, hundreds of thousands of students. They're bringing them into the fold, and if the furthest anybody got in his, you know, studying of the Torah is just with Jesus, and it's a fraction of what the people in the nation of Ephraim get, so then they're going to think he's Mashiach, and maybe for that moment. He is their Mashiach because that's all they have. You know, they have an advertisement for like a holy pen and then and then a little bit of like a one verse in English with no explanation completely taken out of context, followed by another advertisement for a tofu bag. And their and their preacher is like flying on private jets and has a huge mansion that's worth a hundred million dollars. And that's all they have. So for each person on their level, but there has to be an understanding and a respect, and a love, and a passion, and a humility between different groups 
uh, whether it's the Jews, the Christians, the Muslims, each one uh, striving to get closer to Hashem with following his teachers and his leadership. And of course, uh, the relationship that, let's say, we enjoy studying the Torah. You spent many years in Yerushalayim and hanging out with Chabad at the Kotel and whatever. So you have a, a, a special enjoyment in studying Torah with me. It's a different kind of relationship than you might have with with the people in the nation of Ephraim when you're when you're teaching Torah. It's a different level. So let's hope that uh, that every, everybody uh, <laughs> finds their way. And yeah, uh, Hans kept Hans is very he's a very big chassid of yours. He really has a very big passion. Um, and, yeah, he has uh, a huge which heart. Is... He is a huge heart. Absolutely. I mean, he is like, uh, yeah, he's Joe. You know, his middle name is Joseph. You know, or his second name is Joseph. He's like a real, uh, you know, one of the archers. You know, <laughs> he's a fighter. Absolutely. And um, he saw the light. Let me put it this way. You know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so right. yeah, so let's uh, hope for that me, you I'm, know you have to yeah. understand you know for me you know after um, you know after been out for you know I was after I was cut off from um, Jerusalem for seven years. Um, of course, the world continued. You know, things happened in Israel and so on and so on. And then to go out, I went out uh, alone with two guys. You know, with one chauffeur, one two guys. And then I said, okay, you know, let, let's see who is coming out when I start preaching Torah and coming out, you know, and um, so from all people who came out, you know, they, uh, you know, Hannes is one of the most um, enthusiastic about it, you know, I really have to say. And it's for me, it's an absolute pleasure to see because, you know, because before they were all completely as far away from Torah as you can see. So, um, and you know, one of the uh, the ideas, of course, you know, of Ephraim is that he is a heathen. You know that he was born outside, and uh, you know, by raising his level, he pulls the the rest of the world with him. You know. Now the All right, well, thank you with for the... that reply. Go ahead. The closing statement. Go ahead. Go. Oh, closing statement. Closing statement already. Shall we close? Okay. Um, no, um, oh, no, this was now out of totally off. <laughs> sorry, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, um, let's okay. So, we, um, you know, first of all, why I really wanted to say this about the whole Messiah issue, well, from the very, very beginning, you know, I told everybody and tried to explain everybody that. To be Moshiach, well, within the within the Torah, where every priest, every king, and every prophet was a, a an anointed Messiah, you know, uh, Moshiach, yes, yeah, yes. exactly. So now the um, the term Messiah for the end time dude, son of man, never appears. You know, even Cyrus, where I think, you know, Isaiah 45, I think the 45th president fits the issue. You know, Cyrus was called Moshiach, and he was not even, um, he was neither Jewish nor Israel. He was a heathen, you know. So only with the, uh, the Christians, it becomes a topic because they said, yeah, Jesus is the Messiah, the Messiah. And it's, you know, th this is the whole issue, you know. So normally... Um, I know in a, in a Hebrew environment, of course, you know, everybody knows, okay, Messiah, well, the, you know, Kohen Hagadol, he was a Messiah, everybody is a Moshiach, uh, here, Moshe was a Moshiach, Messiah, and so on and so on. There were an anointed guys from Hashem who brought the, in your case, you know, the Jewish people one gener over one generation to the other generation, you know? And uh, so this is why, um, you know, this whole Messiah issue was never a big issue for us, you know, and I always try to, you know, tell people, I said, no, you know, to be a Messiah, it's a, well, don't you want to be a Messiah too? You, you can be a Messiah too, why not? You know, you can become a savior. I mean, uh, currently, like the climate cult is running around and saying, hey, you can become a savior to save planet Earth. 
Yeah, okay, so yes, meaning you, you can become also a savior by saving the Jewish people from Rome. You know, whoever is able to kick out the Pope, well, he will be Messiah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> definitely, <laughs> yes. I mean, there is no question about it. And this is my last way that I say, okay, you know, according to whatever, um, you know, the U.S. State Department did, what happened over now the course of the last uh, years, you know, with Trump and Corona, you know, Corona, you know, the crown, you know, I um, honestly believe that we are, you know, extremely close to, you know, the the revelation of the real deal, you know, because the, even the new world order is built. So to build a pope on top that whoever, you know, is able to exchange them, well, then the, the, the kingdom from is transferred from Rome to Jerusalem. I honestly believe this. And there's all the laws of the church are saying this, you know, the statements of various individuals are saying that, you know, and the Torah is also speaking about this. So I believe that the Masons who already built a house for David, 2 Samuel 5, you can read this, you know, that the Masons built a house for David, well, they did this in this age too. And the Masons, they are claiming that they are from Hiram. So that means they, they are heathens. That they um, consciously, consciously said, yes, we know we are Gentiles. We have nothing to do. But Hiram, he is the uh, temple builder from Solomon. He is the first um, Mason, if you like. So this is our example. And so we help to build... Um, uh, the Jewish people, you know, everything so that when the real guy comes, well, the temple can be uh, reinstated. So this is the Masons. And the Masons, well, they, they are Jewish, they are Christians, but they are, you know, don't go according to whatever statements. They go according to their own stuff, you know, human rights and things like this. And I, you know... Okay, I, I also... So thank you all for clarifying that, and hopefully we'll be able to clarify this more. I think this is something that um, uh, you know, as a leader of a community and, and in general, leaders sometimes forget to, I mean, they try very hard to explain their followers the capacity of what the leadership is. I feel that many Hasidim, for example, didn't actually care about the Rebbe. They were just looking for somebody to fill the void of a Moshe Rabbeinu image or a Mashiach image. And when the Rebbe didn't sleep, for the whole Sukkot, for seven days, nobody, it didn't bother anybody because the Rebbe didn't want to sleep because his father said you should sleep in the Sukkah. And the Rebbe, the previous Rebbe said you should sleep outside the Sukkah. So the Rebbe said, I don't want to disrespect anybody. I'm not going to sleep for seven days. And then on Simchat Torah, the Rebbe has a heart attack. But if the Hasidim actually cared about the Rebbe, they would have get some rabbis together to make a Psak Din, a Jewish law, that the Rebbe must sleep in a sukkah or something and uh, or or sleep outside the sukkah, but the Rebbe must sleep because it's Bikuach Nefesh. And the Rebbe would listen because the Rebbe was a God-fearing Jew. And if the rabbis would say, this is what the Rebbe needs to do. So I'm just saying that the Hasidim didn't see the Rebbe as a person. They would line up to get a dollar from the Rebbe, you know? Um, so they were, t they were using the Rebbe. The Rebbe was a nice guy. The Rebbe was happy to help, you know? But at the same time, I think the Hasidim missed the point. So, and, and as much as the Rebbe, towards the end of his life, uh, that we were able to see, said, Tut alts vos ihr kent, ich hab getan alts vos ich ken. You know, the, the, the Hasidim didn't hear that. They still kept pinning it back, all the responsibility on the Rebbe. And I think that that's something that today's leadership needs to make clear. We are just able to talk and to teach and whatever but we're just human beings just like everybody else just like the the the, the criteria for mashiach he has to be of a flesh and blood and okay. we cannot get at, you know the only one who is above everything is only hashem so Amen. let's hope that our followers get that and uh, don't take us too seriously you know <laughs>
Yeah, I know it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, uh, you know, when I started this whole thing, I knew I would, of course, you know, most likely like you too, I would get in trouble with, you know, my former community, because everybody says, oh, okay, what's happening now with Ulf? Does he want to, uh, you know, become Jewish now? I mean, what's happening? But, uh, you know, for me, I said, no, no, for me as a leader, I, my first and foremost issue is to to share and to teach all the revelation well i i received you know from hashem out of my uh, out of the torah so this is the first and foremost issue to point out that hashem is the uh, you know the the true source there is nobody besides him everybody is you know uh, there is okay, oh, I want to... outside hashem i want to share the screen one last time if that's okay um, if you can let me do that, and yeah. uh, with this, with this, um, we'll end this show. Here it is. So here we have. Okay, this is the temple uh, coin video. One second. Let me go to. Here's the zoom. Ein moment. So, on our website mnglobal.org, under the Sanhedrin services on the advisory board. Many of you already know that this is where you will find our um, videos, right? Oh, you of got the... a new picture of mine. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Changed it up a little bit, making it interesting. You know? <laughs> uh, it's actually interesting because this time you actually use your glasses. So maybe we'll use this one for next time as well. We're learning the Bible. Um, but here I added our good friend, um, Honorable Noah Hyde Ulf table advisor so for those who want to uh book an appointment to talk to ulf uh, whether religious or business or whatever it is um you're welcome to uh join the crew and i told hans of course that legally according to judaism i can add him as a advisor a yachting to the sanhedrin so uh i'm happy to introduce that and uh, hopefully uh, we'll see great things Yes, amen. I'm uh, quite excited. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And no uh, as I said, you know, I, I dedicated my life to do exactly this. You know, what we said in the beginning, you know, the, um, and I think we are set, you know, to do great things. And I th uh, honestly believe that the real and right understanding of the firstborn blessings in Genesis 48 of Ephraim and, and also of the you know, blessings tend to the other children. I mean, there is so much meat, so much meat, so much jewels and pressures in there. You know, I think we can, you know, we have to pick this thing up uh, next time. Thank you so much, Josef, for your, for your time and so on. I hope we were able to bring some insight and light uh, into some complicated issues. And yeah, there's... N or El Torah. There's no light other than the Torah. So I'm sure everybody's going to feel that. There's nothing yeah. from this Amen. point. Amen. So I will click the button now and then we continue next time.